I can tell you all about it. That was cool. So I, what I was saying is I understand the alphabet there. I can tell you all about it. So this is part two. And so it's just interesting, you know, for people to change this word. But they said, it's a spell. It is screwing us up. It's a spell. It's spellbinding us. Whenever we say understand, we're bringing ourselves beneath something. Well, man, maybe you should be damn beneath something. Maybe you are too high up above it. Get yourself off that fucking pedestal of your damn ego and understand what the fuck is going on. Is that not a way that you think the Buddha should talk? I don't know. Am I calling myself the Buddha when I say that? Well, guess what, man? We're the present fucking moment, limitless presence, and uh, that's what anything is whenever it clears itself completely. So, I mean, I'm not really sure in which the way in which you would prefer me to express to you, but it's a really silly thing to have a preference in that kind of a manner, shape, or form. The only reason I would be expressing it anyway is for uh, whatever is in balance for your learning and your growth. And if it's an agitation, if it's causing you with some kind of ego triggering, then that's like your greatest teacher, your greatest wisdom. You should have like, some of the greatest gratitude for that. Oh, did you just shit me? Oh, yeah, well, you shouldn't shit yourself. Don't shit all over yourself. Well, you know, you could, you know, you could do whatever you want. You should, you could, it would be beneficial for you. You know, I'm tired of all these people being word wizards, governing the flow and causing me to have to believe, huh, should I think about myself and direct myself and control myself, manipulate my ego to a certain shape or form that's of greater benefit? Or should I just like, um, could I just like, um, should I just like, um, allow myself to be? It's a really cool thing when we understand what words mean to where we don't have ourselves caught up in kind of weird places where we're having weird ego programming occurring. Overstand. Innerstand. Okay, cool. We understand. That's really sweet. I really love it. I think it's artsy. And I do think that that's really a a cool and sweet thing to say. Yeah, I understand this. I, I, but do you understand it? Like, uh, like, do you only understand it on the inside? Or, like, what is that exactly saying? I mean, we can add understand to the English language if we want to. I guess we could add overstand, but I don't really understand how that would really work. I just don't get overstand. It doesn't make any sense why you would want to go over something. Like, oop, that was way over my head. I didn't get it. That's more what I see with that, but whatever. People are funny, you know. Their fears and judgments will create any kind of thing. They think they're so clever. And that's cool. Understanding seems completely accurate for what we all agree, understand to mean, you know. And many other things that people try to switch the words to, like I. For some reason, people would rather say I as in the I in their typing instead of just say the word, the letter I. Which I think is interesting. Why, why have a vendetta against the, the letter I? Is it really just artsy? Or are you like thinking that the letter I is inaccurate in some way? I mean, the letter I sounds fine. I. I am. They change it over. I guess it could be artsy and cute. And that's cool. Not a big deal. But uh, I mean, it's not exactly accurate. You probably get some marks down on your term paper. I mean, because I means here, and then I, as the I, means this I, but whatever. You know, some people are calling this the first I, and I'm like, why is that the first I? Did it, was it grown first? Uh, why do they even have to be one, two, three, I guess, I don't know. The third I, I liked the third I, I thought that was cool. But, I mean, a lot of people call it the third eye, but now people are switching it to first eye because they think third's a negative thing. They're like, I don't want to be fir- third, I want to be first. And how dare you? This kind of reminds me of uh, Talladega Nights. If you're not first, you're last. And then in the end, he's like, well, you can be second, you can be third, shit. You'd even be last. <laughs> you don't got to be first, but, you know, some people want to be first so much where now it's our first eye. What happens to these guys? Is this second and third? Who wants to be third, guys? Are you guys okay being second and third? Or, or is your ego hurt? What's going on? What, what's up my other eyes? Oh, it's just sweet. Uh, no, I think third eye is awesome. I'm just going to keep using third eye. But it's alright if you decided that third eye wasn't good enough for some kind of a reason. I'd probably find out why. You know, why wasn't third eye good enough? Who was it that told you third eye wasn't good enough? Or how did you come up with it on yourself? You know, how did you decide that? I'm tired. This is my this is my favorite eye. This is my preferred eye. This is the best eye. So now it's my first eye. 
it's, it's getting tired of looking like it's the last eye, like it's not as important as the other eyes. So it's like, well, what about the other eyes? What do they feel like? Would you rather just like cut them out completely? Obviously, they're pretty important. You like to see the world in this manner, right? I mean, you go ahead and look through your third eye to see if you can see all this stuff like this. Man, you had to be pretty well developed. I mean, I've looked through my third eye. I've been able to close my eyes and see everything around me, but it's not quite to this vividness, I gotta tell you. And yeah, through my third eye, I can see things this vivid, but not usually my present surroundings. So I kind of like them all equally. I just like to call it the third eye because that's what it's been called my whole life. And I just didn't see a reason to change it in any way, shape, or form. But some people do find reasons to change things. I always wonder as to why. Ego clinging, ego attachment, some kind of judgment. Oh no, they're all against me. I knew it. This is like the, the, the constant paranoid uh, conspiracy theorist, you know, talking about, you know, these people created the English language to, to do this to us, to do that to us. Well, actually, the English language is a really amazing and perfect language. I mean, some languages don't have the conjunctions in which allow them to explain in such detail as we are able. So I'm really grateful for the amount of articulation possible through the English language that uh, wasn't possible through the root languages because the root languages didn't have ways to distinguish in such a manner and uh, we do in many languages I mean uh, Spanish speak backwards uh, than we do uh, when they say the car is you know, the car is red they said red is the car or something like that I don't know they, they switch it up it's a different way of speaking it's really cool I'm not I'm not saying bashing Spanish but I'm just saying there are languages that speak in a different coherence than we do, and I really appreciate the way in which we speak, personally. I think it's a, a way that we can linearly or logically or really precisely uh, speak things to uh, utter accuracy that's uh, beneficial to ourselves and every being. And I think it's uh, through this precision of communication that we are really able to expand our consciousness actually i think language is huge in the way in which we're able to articulate our consciousness and the greater way in which we're able to articulate our consciousness means the more conscious and the mindful in which we're able to uh, uh create our realities the more impeccable we are with our word the more impeccable everything is with us it's a really amazing thing these agreements not taking things personally is pretty cool too not making assumptions and always doing our best which we are we're yeah, always doing our best so don't you worry but anytime we notice we're not, you know what, looking at one of those other three Toltec truths, you know, we always come back to them like, oh shoot, I was taking something personally, let me let that go. Oh shoot, I was making an assumption, let me let that go. Oh, I wasn't impeccable with my word, I, I was lying, I wasn't utterly authentic. Okay, now let me change that up. Oh, sorry about that, I embellished that story because it's something I always did for a long time. I didn't think it was good enough when I first started saying it, so I so I changed it. But now that I've realized that I've done that here in this conversation, I'm going to you know, bring myself back to impeccability with my, my words and my actions, my everything, and tell you that, yeah, I embellished that story, and this is actually how the story was more accurately. That would be cool. You could do that. That would be a, a vulnerable place to be. You have to admit that you've lied in the past and that you've been doing this for years, but you know it's going to be freeing if you do that. Or you can just ego cling and uh, hold to that in certain shape or form you prefer. And that's cool. You can do that. That's going to, you know, lead you into different reflections of suffering and agitation and eventually bring you to a place where you're freeing yourself from yourself from the way in which you're, you know, doing those things. And that'll be cool. So, this is a nice day. It's raining pretty beautifully outside. Pretty cool. So let's see, What's, what else do we have here? What else wants to come through for, for judgments and ego cleaning? Oh, yeah, 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 race. Race, that's a fun one. We've already spoke a bit about race in previous things. Uh, some people uh, recently don't even like the word race. And this is more word wizardry. And I think it's interesting. Words are here to help us distinguish our reality in a way that's accurate and also has commonality between the people speaking it. So when I speak to you in a word and you know what that word means, um, now we're able to directly communicate uh, accurately what's going on. When I talk about the sky being blue, because you know what blue is, we're able to uh, understand you know, one another on a really amazing uh, level or fashion form. And so I, I think it's interesting people want to change the English language, and I think it's really funny that they're attempting to do this. But who is it? Who is the one that's saying that these things are spellbinding us? Because do we understand how things even go? 
I have understand uh, the realms of frequency to be lines or channels, rivers of energy that flow through us endlessly. It's a really amazing thing occurring. And that every word and every uh, frequency that relates to a feeling within us actually has its own personal line going through us. And so we can clog a channel of our expression, we can cause a buildup behind that, and then they can burst and go through one of the other channel areas, cause a disease, a sickness, and illness within us. Or we can open that channel fully, and then it's as if that, that channel is just a beautiful wisdom, phenomenal energy. But when we clench it just the tiniest bit, it becomes a volatile energy expression, such as anger or whatever it is, any kind of other expression that we're holding back within ourselves that can cause us any kind of nervousness, agitation, volatility in any way, shape, or form. But if we open them all, good to go. Now we're able to be assertive, now we're able to be happy, now we're able to be sad when we need to, now we're able to do all kinds of different things, you know, weave really effortlessly through the flow of life, or we great a great amount of effort through our judgment, through our ego understanding of, you know, not wanting to be this, that, or the other. And that's cool. And a lot of people will breed these things in us because they have a fear that has been created into a certain reality, and then they project that fear outwards onto other people because of their uh, their paranoia that has created an intellectual of understanding of what's occurring. And I'm wishing to, to really clear these things within the conscious uh, reality at this time, within our subconscious self, our conscious self, all the different parts of ourselves, because it's just crazy to me. I'm like, are you kidding me? Come on now. I mean, jeez, how ridiculously fearful and judgmental that we have to be. You think me saying one word is going to screw me up? You think if I say hate, that is going to fuck me up in the day. That man said hate today. Oh, morning. Oh, jeez. This is so silly. Good morning. Good to see you all. Love you. Did you feel like I just put you into a place of traumatized death morning? When I said morning, did that make you think, Oh, what a dreary life I will have. What a terrible day it is today. The colors of black come to mind and death is upon me. Oh my goodness, all that has happened in the past and all that will occur in the future, I am placed into a deep state of depression and mourning for all that is. And I gotta say, mourning doesn't have to be a really depressing thing, it would be pretty beautiful. There are women that lose their children in the Aboriginal country in Australia, and they mourn for the rest of their life, they wail. And the sound of the wailing can be heard all over, they wail for the whole lifetime. Now this is a tragedy, absolutely. But it's really beautiful as well, it's like, wow, I can't believe somebody does that. I wish that I could free them from the need to do this, but it's their culture, you know. They're, they're tied into that, and they're tied into to mourning for their whole lifetime. Other people could let it go. This would be seen as a healthy thing in our society now, you know, to where somebody passes away, and then that's what happened, you know. And we can move on, wish them well, and there's a Buddhist teaching to where it's not a bad thing at all. You're just like, yeah, good job, man, pass through, woo! Man, I hope that person has a delightful rebirth. I, I, I pray for their mindfulness through the bardos and that they are able to realize a limitless state of being and attain the rainbow body or, or however it is, whichever body they happen to be, be completely liberated into their Buddha state. You know, we're, we're really, you know, not really holding back. You know, like death is a good thing. It's not bad. They're even choosing when they die. It's pretty awesome. I mean, when the Buddha died, he drank a mushroom soup. He knew he was going to die that day. It was his 81st birthday. You know, amazing. Three cycles of 27 perfectly completed. Boom. And so, uh, yeah, he drank poison mushroom soup, knowing it to be poison, but knowing the, the teaching to accept all that was offered, no matter what, by consciousness, accept all that was offered, be it meat, be it soup, be it this, be it that, whatever it was, accepting everything offered. And so he accepted it. He drank it. He knew it was poison. His disciples saw it was poison. Like, man, would you, would you like to lay down? Like, what's going on? Maybe you should stop teaching. And he's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to continue teaching until I die. So he keeps teaching the whole time, giving transmissions, giving the Dharma, giving the Dharma, giving the Dharma, giving the Dharma, enlightening beings, enlightening beings, enlightening beings, even while he's dying from poison soup. And before he dies, he tells his disciples, go to that lady who gave me the soup and tell her thank you. Go on and thank that woman for giving me this soup, for helping me, for freeing me, for transitioning me. You know, what an amazing, phenomenal blessing. That even as you're dying, you have great gratitude and understanding for everybody. It's like, what? Could you imagine getting your head cut off and having unconditional, complete, beautiful love for the person doing it? Like, actually, like, having a joy towards them. Like, oh, thank you so much. This is the best, man. What an honor. Thank you. You know, like, whoa. How cool would that be? That'd be crazy, right? Who would do that? That's 
That's, all, that's out of worldly. That makes no sense. Well, if you understand perfection, it might make sense. Depends on if you're clinging. Whoa, you mean I'm going to lose this, short, this form? I'm not going to be Ryan anymore? No! You're limitless. You're going on forever. You're infinite. You're not going to be passing away. So what? Uh, okay, your body's gone. Next lifetime, you're no longer a benefit here. It's no longer a benefit to you here. Come on, keep going. What? You gotta die now? Then die now. You gotta die later? Then die later. Whatever it is, just go. Be an acceptance. Be an allowance. Understand. Trust. Come on. It's okay if you can. It's not a big deal. Whatever you're doing is perfect. You know, no judgment, baby. I can't get this, I can't get this, I'm so awful for not being able to get this out. And then you're like hitting yourself super hard now. It's like, no, it's cool, all right? You can't get it. Then don't get it. I, I want to get it. Well, that's okay. Well, I mean, that's fine. It's, you don't have to want to get it. You could be like, cool with not getting it. Whatever you want. If you really want to get it, and maybe you could just accept that you don't get it right now and then work towards getting it. I don't know. I mean, you, you don't have to maybe hate yourself or not currently getting it, I don't know, whatever you want to do, however you feel, <laughs> it's okay, you know, because whatever you're doing is perfect, this may be hard to see, but this is true, I mean, it's out of perfection, you can ego cling or you cannot, people ego cling all the time, I'm a Hare Krishna, I'm a Buddhist, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a whatever, I'm a, I don't know, I'm this label, I'm that label, I'm that label, uh, these are the things that that label does. These are the certain characteristics for that label. And so this is me, this is me, this is me, this is me. Okay, well, I'm glad that you're this, and I'm glad that you're that. I'm glad that you're doing all these things, but these are all ego identities, and these are all ego clingings. How do I not be anything? Mm, I don't know. I mean, you don't have to figure that one out. How do you not be anything? What are you being right now, anyway? Well, you know, uh, well, you could go ahead and identify yourself as being something, but where are you actually being? I'm being Ryan. Are you? What does Ryan look like? Uh, well, he has curly hair, blonde tips from the sun, and he's got facial hair that doesn't grow anymore for some reason, so it's max length, and, uh, smooth skin, yeah, yeah. not too bad. 31-year-old man. Uh-huh. And uh, what is Ryan being being then? So this is Ryan. You sure? Oh, uh, well. I mean, it's what he looks like. Uh, his characteristics, if you're looking at him in a mirror and a camera to distinguish him. Uh, don't know. That's what I'm being. Mm. Are you sure you're being any label? <laughs> I don't know. Ah, that's good. You don't know. All right. Well, who's this I that you're talking about? I don't know. You don't know. Who's the I that doesn't know? There's an I that doesn't know the I that doesn't know. There's an I that doesn't know the I that doesn't know. Well, that's freaking weird. What does that even mean? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Who is this I that doesn't know all these things? I still don't know that I. I, 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 I. I guess I is me. And who the fuck is me? Well, I'm a limitless being. What the hell is that? I don't know. It's not defined clearly. It doesn't have a limit. Oh. So you're limitless. Meaning you have no limit. Which means you can't really explain yourself clearly. Because there's a word that explains you. A label of some kind would be then a limit. Is that what you're saying? Um. It sounds that way. Perhaps. Yes. Maybe. Hmm. I am I am I am I. I am, 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 oh, okay, I am this, your I am, 
I'm not I am, I simply am. You are. I am. Ah. Hmm. Being. Being being. What is being being? Being is being whatever being be be being. <laughs> be be being. That was cool. A lot of bees there. Bzz. Bees. Buzzing bees. In the tone of a buzzing bees. Um, track here. Not too hard when you're just uh, expressing as the moment. Ego clinging and judgment. What is an ego? Well, whatever it is you're identifying with, actually. I move in this way. I do things in this way. This is my character. I am a tattoo artist. I am this. I am that. I'm that. Well, I am everything. Okay, cool. What does that exactly mean, I am everything? Well, I am everything entirely existing as one being. So is there any particular form in there that you prefer? Sometimes there is forms that I would prefer. Other times, I prefer to not prefer. So that sounds pretty versatile. Would you be that way or that way or that way? There are certain ways that I would be. There are certain ways that I do not believe I would be. But I am always. <laughs> it becomes more difficult to explain, I understand. So how do we find where it is that we are and what it is we're ego attaching to? I mean, really, we are just whatever we are in the moment that we happen to be in. Do we have to hold to a shape or form? Do we have to hold to an identity in some kind of a way, or can we be more versatile? Can I be happy, sad, mad, this, that, or the other? Can I be anything? Is there anything that I'm unwilling to be? Why am I unwilling to be it? Now, is there a reason why things are occurring in certain ways? So, like, why does something kill something? Why does something create a volatile energy expression? 
Now, maybe we find uh, we don't want to be everything because we're afraid that if we are everything that we may express in these kinds of manners that we don't wish to express. But of course, maybe if we understood why things express in this way, we wouldn't actually have that fear anymore. Things only express in these kinds of manners because of their inability to express themselves naturally and authentically. So if you're suppressing an energy, it creates the need for that type of energy expression. So if you do not express, suppress an energy, there will be no need for those types of energies to occur. These energies will be completely unoccurable. They'll be impossible to have happen. So when you fully free yourself from yourself, you will no longer have any kind of need for a volatile energy expression as you'll be able to express everything clearly through the transmutation that is the transcendental state that your throat uh, chakra is able to uh, transmit. You can then express completely from the breath, from the heart, and it will be very easy for you to move everything through in a way that doesn't create, like, boom, volatility through uh, action of uh, hitting or any of these kinds of weird other energy expressions. You can just be like, this, 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 and then it clears the energy out, it moves it through, you're good to go. One of the great blessings that is this phenomenal voice channel, the void of us all, you know, it's like, whoa, and just moving it, moving it, moving it, moving it, moving it. A lot of other t times, we're unable to express ourselves in our truths. We're unable to be authentic. We're unable to be genuine. And this causes a clenching of the energy that doesn't allow expression to come, and now expression has to come through somewhere else. Now, maybe we are more connected with our lower chakra centers, and then we express it through there. And that's like a very volatile, earthy style. Or we express it from above the heart, in the upper chakra centers. Now, that creates cursing and all kinds of weird energies to where we're like trying to attack energies on the higher chakra center realm. So, psychically, you know, to telepathy or any kind of thing that's when you get like a, a glass jar falling your head out of nowhere because somebody's hexed you in some kind of a way crazy right maybe they don't even know they've done it that's like whoa spell casting but this is through not being willing to express through the bottom chakra centers not being a violent person and uh then having the path of least resistance for that expression that must express go through the upper chakra centers which are like imagination visualization thought centers all these different centers and uh, that creates, like I said, the hexing, the cursing, the, the limiting uh, capabilities of every people's uh, expression in certain ways of like dark, evil, seemingly very heavy volatility going towards them in a really amazing fashion that can cause them great pains in their lives, actually. Of course, it would only ever do this if it was a, a karma that was needed for them and not against them. So if this does occur to you, it's something that's for you, not against you. And it's here to show you something yourself to bring, uh, to bring you to the focus. <sighs> necessary to find the truth in yourself and become free of the judgments that allow the gateways of these energies even possible to occur to you. Without judgment, uh, nothing can really come to harm you. Being that you're for everything and not against anything and uh, completely open in every way, nothing can befall you. Not having a judgment towards it doesn't allow a gateway for energy to come into you and hurt you. And so, be sure that if there's any way for uh, energy to harm you, it's because your own judgment has provided a gateway for it to be able to enter your temple. Your own uh, judgment, your own fear, your own attachment, your own relating uh, in an attacker-defense manner, uh, creating the balance of uh, polarity, the balance of opposites, a uh, duality, a uh, uh, reverberation between your two frequencies. Now, if you keep yourself utterly open, free in the wisdom of non-action and truth, embodied, authenticness, genuineness, uh, being of benefit always, never having the ill intention to succeed yourself over another individual to overcome or compete, uh, then you'll find yourself in a really amazing, expansive, expressional uh, capability to where nothing can ever uh, come to, to harm you in that kind of way, shape, or form. This is what made Jesus' uh, Jesus's sacrifice uh, very amazing and very true because he uh, had to give himself up. He was for everything and not against it. Nothing could make him come. You know, uh, when they came to take him, he had to say, let them take me. He didn't, they weren't just able to grab him. The disciples could have fought and killed those men and he could have gotten away or he also could have just not gone or whatever it is. He gave himself to that slaughter. He gave himself as a true sacrifice because nothing could take him. He had to allow them to do this. And so he did. And uh, amazing as it was because his sacrifice was a great reflection of the realm of all where DNA follows down one side of the chain and hits a place that's no longer X or Y, a really unique spot. It then shoots back up the other side, and he got to exist as this side where he went into that spot, out of existence, and then back into existence and up the other side 
really amazing, phenomenal thing for us all to uh, be able to experience the reflection of our own DNA, reflecting in everything fractally, holographically, every moment reflecting every moment constantly. And this is one where we can really distinctly see if we've come to the certain realms of awareness and realization to allow us to see at that level of capacity. It's a really amazing, phenomenal blessing to see that kind of a reflection, that kind of a sacrifice, and understand that we've done that for ourselves. You know, we are all one. And so what you reap, you will sow. And that was a amazing seed sown, a phenomenal fruit. Releasing all judgment. Having forgiveness. Uh, loving your enemy as your friend. Loving everybody equally is an amazing, wonderful thing. You know, wishing for everybody's salvation instead of their condemnation. Phenomenal ways to release ourselves and absolve ourselves from the bindings of our own judgments. Our own ego clinging and attachment to our own ego identities. What I think is wrong for me must then also be wrong for you. So if you do what I believe to be wrong for me, you're extremely wrong. And how dare you? You know, but if there's no right or wrong... It's easy for me to not have to cling to any identity. It's easy for me to just do what I genuinely wish to do in any moment and not judge myself and therefore not judge any other. And that's an amazing thing. And I see many people perpetuating judgments that have been given to them through people that talk of being high in spiritual reality but actually promote and uh, denote to duality. They actually promote energies that are of war mentality, that are of versus mentality. And people are doing this in the physical realm with warring with other countries. And people are doing this in the spiritual realm by saying they have a high spiritual ego and conscious understanding, even giving us pictures of uh, wars happening in galactic frequencies, wars occurring. And people that agree with these things because they've attached to these lines and created these realities with these other people. And so these amazing created realities through our perceptual viewpoint only are being attached to by many beings and being empowered by many beings so where many people are able to fall into these storylines and believe in these storylines and empower these storylines but any time that we wish to pull out of these storylines no longer empower these storylines we can see that they are truly projections of our mind and we can become free of them and this is a very important thing because this will bring a lot of peace not only to ourselves but to the benefit of everything um, because it's so funny that people down here are creating the fight and people up here are creating the fight we reach a heart center, we can see that there is no duality, that there is no fight occurring, and um, that these things can't possibly exist outside of what we uh, create and believe them to exist, what we empower through that creation and belief coming from ourselves. And so I can't wait to the day that we stop doing that, and that we can really see uh, with accuracy what's been occurring. And uh, yeah, it's really very gorgeous um, when we can become free of this ego clinging and judgment. You know, because it happens. It happens a lot. And it happens constantly with people that I'm meeting. And I always am able to find it and see it, see where the judgment lies and trigger it. Whoa. I don't mean to do it. It just happens naturally. It just is something that comes aware. And then I boom. And I lose friendships and relationships and all kinds of things. Uh, it's rare that somebody's able to see it right there in that moment. But sometimes they are able if I'm able to stay with them long enough. And sometimes they are unable and I'm not able to stay with them long enough. Mainly because I'm so sweet with me that it's not going to keep me in a situation that's not beneficial. It's going to be like, okay, you've done it. You've done enough. Just go on. Now, don't judge yourself. Or do. And if you do judge yourself, we're going to show you and bring you to a point where you don't have to judge yourself. So when everything had a climactic point uh, last night, I was brought immediately to a place where I could get some nice vegan pizza and eat that. And then I could go over to this other spot and then I could see, oh, okay... There's the 33 and 255s, and then here's an opportunity to come into patience with myself instead of become angry with myself, and then here's another opportunity where I receive a beautiful gateway of a brother and a new sister I met, and see, wow, man, how much I'm loved and how much perfection it is and all this wonderful stuff.